Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to show you how to use Mixins in Stylus. Now, if this is your first CSS preprocessor, a Mixin might be a foreign concept to you, but if you're coming from something like SAS or less, Mixins should feel right at home. What's great about Mixins in Stylus is that they are just so easy. They're completely transparent. You can define and drop them in with hardly even using any syntax. And if you've never used Mixins, don't worry, we're going to show you what they're all about and how you can get the most out of them. So keep watching, we're going to get into that now. So to pick up where we left off, I have Stylus currently running and we have our CSS over here and our Stylus over here. Now what we want to do is start to define Mixins. Now what is a Mixin? Well a Mixin is really just a group of code that's contained inside a statement, right? So it could be things that you need to reuse a whole bunch, maybe like a clear fix. And so instead of having a clear fix class like you may be used to where you just type clear fix and have that class apply the clear fix for you every time you need it, you could have a clear fix mixin and in your CSS, let's say you had something floating in your main container here and you wanted to clear fix uh, this container, you could just include the mixin by simply just using it here. Uh, for instance, it's if we had a clear fix uh, mixin, we could just say clear fix, just like that. And, and now this code would bring in all the additional code. So a good way to think about a mixin is it's essentially like a variable where you can reuse and reference it. However, a mixin can accept things like arguments. Okay, so to give you a good example, let's use a CSS3 property border radius. So in Stylus, to define a mixin, you simply just have to write what your mixin's name is going to be and then follow with parentheses. So if we wanted to say border hyphen radius and then parentheses like that, you'll see that our, our code coloring instantly decides that this is actually something. You can see it's green, therefore our code coloring knows that it's not just a standard CSS property. Now if we hit enter and tab over, we can now add the uh, CSS that we want to be generated from this mixin. For instance, if we wanted to use the border radius, uh, the uh, hyphen webkit, not webkit, web, webkit border radius and, and give this a value like five pixels. Now next we wanna say border radius five pixels. Okay, so now what happens is that this mixin right here contains this bit of code. And every time we use this mixin, let's say right here, we save this, Let's check out what our CSS is generated over here. So for our body main, it now not only gets the border radius five pixels, but it also gets the WebKit border radius five pixels. Okay, so this saved us maybe a little bit of typing, and this is just about the most basic example you can get. Now let's say you're thinking, well, I don't always want my border radius to be five pixels. Well, that's where things like arguments come in. So let's pass in an argument uh, and we can just uh, give this any particular name. In SAS, you have to prefix this with a dollar sign because it's declaring a variable. In Stylus, you don't. Uh, if you'll notice, that's just one common theme throughout Stylus uh, development that is not there with SAS. You don't have to use a lot of syntax. Uh, in SAS, to define a mixin, you have to actually declare, hey, this is a mixin. Uh, the way you do that in Stylus is the same way you declare a function, it's just by with these parentheses. So it's really nice and easy. If we wanted to have this border radius argument, all we have to type in here is radius or whatever you'd like the name to be. Now, anytime that you want to use this argument, you can say radius like that. Now for this to actually work, we're gonna actually have to pass in a value into here. So we want this to be something different than five pixels. We'll say this is 10 pixels, just like a function in JavaScript or something like that. You're passing the argument in here, it's getting assigned to this value, and then this value is then uh, being used for these properties. So after I save that, you can see that our CSS output is now border radius 10 pixels, border radius, WebKit border radius 10 pixels. Okay, so this is how you use arguments. 
What about if you almost always want this to be five pixels except for when you don't? And therefore you think that maybe most of the time you wanna just type border radius just like this. Well, we can actually design well, we can actually assign a default value to this variable, this argument here, simply by saying equals five picks, just like that in our variable declaration. And if we wanted to add more variables, you could do that with a comma, uh, arguments that is. And if we save this, you'll see that even though we haven't defined anything here, we haven't passed any arguments in to our mixin. It's still outputting as five pixels. However, if we wanna override that and say 15, it overrides that and doesn't use this five pixels. Now, what are some cool things that you could do with mixins that you can't do in other CSS preprocessors? Well, you can actually use mixins to sort of replace properties. So uh, we have this border radius property, right? And what were to happen if we were to actually say border radius 15 pixels like this. In fact, let's use something different than 50. Let's use 20 just so it's different. Would you think that it would simply output border radius 20 pixels or would it output WebKit border radius 20, border radius 20? Well, in other CSS preprocessors, you're only going to get the uh, property listed. However, since this property is actually defined as a mixin, when this is compiling, it's going to use the mixin rather than just the standard property. To see what I mean here is if we save this and we check out our CSS, we get both the WebKit border radius and just border radius. So here, seeing this, our syntax highlighting doesn't know this mix is a mixin. It doesn't look like a mixin, it looks like a property but it's really intuitive. We're just saying border radius 20 pixels and we don't even have to notice that our CSS is outputting all this extra stuff. So that's a transparent mixin and it's one of my favorite features about mixins in Stylus. Let's go ahead and do one more example. Let's actually build out that clear fix mixin that we had talked about or I had mentioned in the start of this tutorial. So what we can do is we could just make our own mixin and I like to keep something like a clear fix short, like CF, because uh, it's something you maybe use a lot. So I'm defining this mixin just by saying CF, parentheses, tab over, and let's just say uh, zoom one, and then we can use the parent selector, which is the ampersand, which I'll get into more. And we can say ampersand after space, and then on the very next line, ampersand colon before. Now when we tab over, we can say content. This is the sort of standard clear fix. And display table. Okay, and then we're going to say for after Clear both. Okay, so we now have this clear fix mixin, and anytime that we want to use this, all we simply have to do is say CF, save it, and you'll notice that our body's getting all this clear fix stuff. So if you want to drop in a nice and easy clear fix into your stylus project, all you have to do is make a nice and easy mixin, and every time you want to clear your floats, you can do so using just quick shorthand. So this is how you create and use mixins. There's lots to do with mixins and we're gonna go over it all more once we get into things like functions, more operators, interpolation, uh, hashes, conditionals, all sorts of cool stuff that exist in CSS preprocessors and specifically stylus. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.